Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is my review of the UX305 that is made by ASUS. Now, this is a notebook that is going to be getting quite a bit of attention in the near future and currently has quite a bit of buzz around it, but mostly because of its similarity to the upcoming Apple MacBook, the 12 inch one. And it's similar in specs, but almost half the price. So people are interested in this thing. I've had my review unit for over two weeks. I've used it very extensively. Now, when I do a review on a notebook, especially of something that is important like this one, I really try to use it as a daily. Like I've used it probably realistically over 20 hours of extensive use. I like to take my time with these things, but here's my review. So just a quick unboxing here. It's a nice and simple box. So when you open it up, Notebook is on the left and your AC adapter and ethernet dongle are on the right. I'll get into more details about the AC adapter and the ethernet port in a bit. And when you lift up the notebook, underneath there's a layer of pamphlets and other accessories. The unit I'm reviewing is the Microsoft Signature Edition. It's got a Broadwell Intel Core M 5Y10. It surprisingly only runs at 800 megahertz, but it can bump up to two gigahertz with turbo boost. It's got a 13.3 inch 1080p screen, eight gigs of RAM, 250 gigs of SSD. It's got integrated HD 5300 graphics. And all of this for $700 in a very thin and light package that only weighs 2.65 pounds. The top surface of the notebook is brushed aluminum. Now they've done like a radial pattern and this surface actually doesn't show fingerprints that easily. Now the bottom of the notebook is also aluminum, but they've done it in a different finish. It's got that satin finish that's similar to the way MacBooks are done. It's got four rubber feet that are actually really grippy, which I like, and two speakers on the left and right here. Now this finish of the aluminum does show fingerprints more easily. And you'll notice how this whole thing has a purplish tint to it. Under certain lights, it kind of looks black or dark gray, but under more natural lighting, it does look a little purple. They call this color obsidian stone, but it's basically like a dull plum or eggplant color, but it looks all right. It's also supposed to come in white in what they call a ceramic alloy color, but I haven't actually seen the white one in person, so I'm not sure how that looks. Now in terms of its size, it's a little bit smaller than a 13 inch MacBook Air, and it's also a little bit lighter. Here you can see the two notebooks end to end. The ASUS UX305 is also a little bit shorter. Now on the left side, there's two USB 3 ports and an SD slot. I also wanna draw your attention to the finish of the side of the top lid. If you look closely, you'll see that there's a rough finish on the edge of the top lid. When you touch it, it almost feels like sandblasted glass. And on the right side, there's a hole for the AC adapter, another USB 3, a micro HDMI, and a headphone jack. So something I noticed with the SD slot, it is a very loose fitting slot. There's no click or any kind of friction or resistance when you put your card in. So it actually slides in and out really easily. I would even say a little too easily. It's really not a big deal, but I just thought I should mention it. There was a little bit of flex on the screen, nothing major, but the bottom chassis was more flexible than I thought it would be. There was no problems with it, just unexpected. This notebook uses a 45 watt AC adapter. It's pretty small, but the prongs don't fold in. And when you're low on battery, the orange light flashes to let you know. I found that it took about four, four and a half hours to fully charge the battery. And if you're wondering what that white light for that little light bulb icon is, it lights up white when the lid is open and the screen is on. And when you close the lid and it's hibernating, it slowly flashes white. Not very exciting. So this is really nice of ASUS. They've included an ethernet dongle in case you want to use one. It's simple, it's auto detected by the software and it works. The screen is a matte finish, 1920 by 1080. It's not very bright, but for a notebook this size, it's adequate. It is an IPS display, so the colors are decent, but it's not amazing. But the viewing angles are pretty good. Overall, I think the screen is decent. If you need a better screen, they will have a QHD version in the near future. But I think for an Ultrabook with this processor, the 1080p screen is probably where you wanna be. Keep in mind that the 1080p version is not a touch screen, but the Quad HD one will be. So if you really want a touch screen, you're gonna have to hold out for that high res one. This thing also has a 720p webcam up here, and it works as advertised. It does webcamming in 720p. The keyboard is okay. The first couple of days I was using it, I didn't really like it. It has a very short travel. I think it's less than one millimeter, and it doesn't feel particularly clicky or tactile, but it gets the job done. It doesn't feel cramped or anything, but I don't love it. I think it's a very average keyboard. It doesn't have backlighting, but I'm one of those people that turns off backlighting, so I'm okay with that. The caps lock key does have a little LED to let you know when it's on. My biggest beef with this notebook was the trackpad. It wasn't a terrible trackpad, but it was significantly worse than any other component on this notebook. It really stuck out. 
Sometimes the trackpad wouldn't work at all. Sometimes it would skip around. Sometimes I was getting double clicks when I was only single clicking. Sometimes it wouldn't register double clicks. But the biggest problem was that the right button had this weird double click to it. So I thought this might be a defect on my particular notebook. So I sent it back, they sent me another one, same problem. I checked out the demo model at the store. It had a very similar problem, not exactly the same, but there's definitely something weird going on with that right button. And the thing is, if you only use this notebook for a little bit, it's not a big deal. But if you use this thing for two weeks, you definitely start to notice it. I have to admit, I'm very picky about trackpads, but I really didn't like this one. I'll just leave it at that. So on the back of the notebook, there are these two little feet that kind of lift the notebook up when you open the screen, presumably for better ventilation. Because remember, this notebook is fanless. I'm not sure what they're made out of, but it's not rubber. And just out of curiosity, I wanted to see the thermals of a fanless notebook. So I used the Fleur again. On the left is the UX305, and on the right is a 2014 13-inch MacBook Air. Both of these are running benchmarks for about an hour, so they are as hot as they can get. And it's pretty obvious, the UX305 actually doesn't get that hot. Intel throttles this CPU down when it gets a little warm, so it's never gonna get super hot. Okay, speakers, this thing has some software called Audio by Ice Power, which has different profiles for different kinds of sounds. There's some slight variation when you're using headphones, but if you're using speakers, these different profiles all sound the same. The speakers themselves are really small and the sound quality is actually pretty poor, but for an Ultrabook this size, you kind of expect that, right? They're also a little quiet. It's hard to break 70 decibels with them, but this is what they sound like. Okay, so gaming. I was super curious to see how an 800 megahertz CPU would play games. And I guess I was kind of surprised that it could play games at all, but they play really poorly. Okay, so first up, Dota 2. With everything on low, lowest resolution possible, this thing runs at around 20, 25 frames per second. Heroes of the Storm actually did worse. So with everything turned low and lowest resolution, I was getting around 10 frames per second. So this is actually unplayable. Maybe this is something that Blizzard will tune on their end to optimize for this CPU and GPU, but in its current state, it's unplayable. And out of curiosity, I ran the Bioshock Infinite benchmark at lowest res, lowest settings, getting around 20 frames per second. Not very good. But the one and only game that I could get to kind of run at a playable frame rate was Counter-Strike Go. This is a very undemanding game, but for the people that are curious out there, you can kind of play CSGO. If you're a student and you're kind of thinking of picking this up, I say go for it because you can't play games very well and you're forced to just do your work. The battery life on this notebook is actually really impressive. It's a 45 watt hour battery, but I was able to get almost three hours of gameplay. I know the frame rates aren't very good. I mean, I was playing at single digit FPS for a little bit, but three hours of games on a notebook is really good. I was able to get six hours watching movies off the drive and just for regular use with screen at about three quarters brightness, I was able to get nine hours of battery life. That's, you know what? For a 45 watt hour battery, that's pretty nice. All right, so my closing thoughts on this thing. This is a notebook that I think is gonna be an excellent option for a lot of people. It's an inexpensive notebook at 700 bucks. It's got a great screen, it's thin, it's light, it's got a really good battery life, it's built well, the keyboard's pretty good. There's a lot of things to love about it. But the one thing that I don't love about it is that trackpad. So if you need a really great trackpad for just kind of the whole user experience, you kinda of wanna look elsewhere but if you're comfortable with using an okay trackpad, or if you just always plug it up to an external mouse, this is a great notebook, it's a great value, and I'm surprised that Asus could offer something of this caliber at this price point. So kudos to them. This is a beast of a machine for that price. So that's the end of the review. I hope you guys liked it. If you liked it, give me some thumbs, and if you loved it, give me some subs. It's been nice. I'll see you guys next time.